Using Rust with pullers is a great solution because of the performance, but even better is to integrate a command line interface. Fortunately, Rust has many options for this, including the CLAP interface that I'm going to use here. Let's go ahead and take a look at how CLAP allows you to build a very fast command line tool interface. All right, let's go ahead and CD into Polar's CLI here, which has all the code that we're going to work with. So I'm going to CD into Polar's CLI. And next up, I'm going to take a look at the code first in the source directory. So a couple things to be aware of here. Whenever you're looking at a Rust-based project, one nice thing that I like to do is do tree-i and then do target. And what this does is shows me a nice structure for what is inside of my project. So if you're looking at somebody else's project, for example, if you run tree-i target, so basically you know, exclude that directory, but show me the tree of everything else here, you can see the structure. So I've got some benchmarking code. I've got the cargo 2ml file. I have my data file that has the iris data set. I have a make file and I also have a lib and a main and integration test. So I'm gonna only focus on the 2ML file right now and also the lib and the main. So first up, let's go to the cargo 2ML file and we can see here that I have clap and I have pullers installed. So clap is the command line interface. Now, if we go to the lib directory here, you can see here that there's a function that does some basic calculation group by aggregation on the iris data set. So that part is pretty straightforward, but what if I want to interact with it or just run it easily from the command line? Well, pretty easily, all you have to do is uh, use the clap parser and put in this boilerplate code. So in this section here, what happens is I put some information in the long about, and that's really all it is, just about 10 lines of code or so, and then I call in the let args and I do an underscore args because I'm not going to use them. I'm just going to invoke it. And so if you want to just execute a function and put it inside of a command line tool with the help menu, this is probably one of the best ways to do it. So how do we run this? Pretty easy to do. I just type in cargo run dash dash. And then at this point, I can then invoke the command line tool. So when it's in this kind of build phase here, uh, it'll pass the arguments into the command line tool. So let's go ahead and do help. And there we go. It's going to go ahead and compile. And when it's done compiling, we'll be able to see the help menu. All right, now I've got this help menu, which again is one of the most powerful parts of using command line tool frameworks as they put all this together for you. And you can say the usage is pretty simple. You just effectively run it. So in order to run it, all I have to do is basically do cargo dash dash, and that's it. And then this will actually invoke our uh, interface. Now. One of the other things to be aware of here is that I could even test out the binary now that it's been built. So in this case, uh, if I went into the target directory here, and if we look at this and we say target here, and then I look at the debug, I can also run the binary like that. So that's one of the nice things about a Rust project, especially one that uses command line tool, is that you can actually just invoke the, the debug binary here, play around with it, and then when you build the actual release that's optimized, same thing, you can give it to somebody and it's ready to go. Really, a command line tool is one of the most effective ways to package a tool and deliver it to other people or your customers.